Now, the next section we'll deal with is vascular injury and bleeding and postoperatively, uh, bleeding postoperatively. And the first case we'll discuss is this patient, and this is a, <clears throat> a uh, catastrophic uh, complication uh, should it occur, and that is the patient who undergoes a knee replacement brought to the recovery room. Um, pulses are not present in the operative limb, and there is poor uh, capillary refill, and certainly the uh, limb looks um, disvascular or avascular. In that setting, what is the most appropriate, appropriate step of management? Uh, certainly observation, not uh, a good idea. Most of these should be dealt with expeditiously. As you know, compartment pressures are slow to develop. An MRI will take hours to set up and get done in most institutions. So um, an emergent routine to return to the operating room while the patient is still under, under anesthesia is an option, but best done uh, in the next uh, option, which is take the patient to the operating room, call the vascular surgery console, get them uh, to the operating room to assist, do an intraoperative arteriogram, identify if, in fact, there is a uh, arterial injury, and then deal with it expeditiously. <clears throat> so you can see here 100%, which is great, of those who uh, answered this question uh, got the right answer, and I think that's an important management uh, to know going into your recertification. It probably will be something on this kind of injury on the test. And I think it's important to uh, be aggressive in the management of this complication. Now, if we overall look at um, arterial injuries, they're, they're luckily and uh, usually very uncommon. But they can occur. In my experience, those patients who are most at risk are the patients with a small knee. So if you're doing a size one or zero, depending upon what implant sizing system you use, then the um, popliteal artery is extremely close to the, po to the back of the knee. And if you perforate through the posterior capsule, uh, either with a retractor or with a saw, as you make the posterior condylar cut, that structure uh, the popliteal artery can be damaged. Uh, it tends to be more on the lateral side, uh, so remember that. Um, and be careful when you're uh, putting your retractors posteriorly uh, to try to stay intracapsular as best you can and then move the tibia forward without perforating through the back of the capsule. Uh, the other uh, area of vascular damage that can occur is in patients who have very rigid arteries, they have significant calcification of the vessel. You can see that on the lateral x-ray. In those patients, number one, I would not use a tourniquet routinely if I see calcification in the arterial vessels posteriorly. I do not use a tourniquet. But if you do use a tourniquet and you aggressively flex the knee, sometimes you can actually fracture the calcification and the artery itself cause either thrombosis or a, a significant disruption of the artery. <clears throat> Remember that the, um, the femoral or superficial femoral artery uh, becomes the popliteal artery at the level of the uh, adductor magnus uh, hiatus. And it, is, it travels very close, anchored by the soleus muscle, as I mentioned, posterior on the medial aspect of the tibial plateau and then branches into the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. But it's adherent to the back of the knee in that area, and it is, uh, in many cases, less than a centimeter um, posterior to the back of, the, uh, of the, the capsule and the back of the tibia. Um, as you can see here, this describes more in detail the bifurcation uh, of the um, the popliteal artery and its localization, and then its branches into the geniculates as it proceeds more distally. Um, in terms of bleeding postoperatively and need for transfusion, 
uh, there's been a real shift away from the use of uh, drains uh, post-operatively in both hip and knee replacement surgery. And there's no question that if you use a drain and you are evacuating the knee of blood that is uh, being emptied into the joint at the end of the procedure, you will oftentimes uh, increase your incidence of transfusion, and that has been documented, documented uh, in the literature. We talked about the immediate need for a vascular surgical consultation if you have an oper operative laceration of the vessel. <clears throat> now, this is a 65-year-old um, a male who has undergone a primary total knee replacement, which is associated with the use of closed suction drainage. What is the, the issue uh, in terms of that, of the problems of using a drain in the knee? And as you go through the selections here, certainly um, this paper by Parker documented in meta-analysis that there is increased incidence of transfusion when a suction device uh, is used postoperatively. I would just um, add, however, that remember that the knee is going to fill with blood after uh, knee replacement surgery. Uh, Jerry Yang, uh, 10 or 15 years ago, had a nice randomized trial where he found that the actual bleeding uh, either came through the wound and there was increased drainage if you did not use a drain in the knee, or there was significant ecchymosis extending into the um, quadris, into the uh, thigh area. So the blood goes somewhere. It either comes out in the drain or it eventually tamponades and ends up in the soft tissues or through the wound. And that may be a problem in terms of potential contamination of the wound with subsequent infection. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.